Hi everyone, I'm Melissa Davis from LiquorLady.com and as an avid cocktail blogger, I am so excited to be here with these other whining women to talk about wine tales. So wine tales is really just a fancy word for wine cocktail or mixed drink with wine. So why don't we go around and introduce ourselves before we get to the recipes and the concoctions and all the different wines that we use. <coughs> Sarita, you want to kick us off? Sure. I'm Sarita. My blog is Vine Me Up. Um, and also, I'm a partner with Leslie here. She's the second person. And um, our wine club is called DM Vino. Okay. Miss Leslie, perfect segue. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Leslie, and I am with Vino 301 Wine Concierge. We're all things Maryland wine. And um, we do wine tours to Maryland's beautiful countryside. And as Sarita said, I, we are partners together for DM Vino for wine tasting. Very nice. Miss Tanisha. Hi, I'm Tanisha, Girl Meets Glass. And um, you can find me at Girl Meets Glass on Twitter or girlmeetsglass.tumblr.com. And Glennis. Oh, good evening, everyone. I'm Glennis Hill of Vino Noir. My blog is vino-noir.com. And you can find me on, what's that, Instagram at <laughs> crewvin7. Uh, those are the only two. Um, social media stuff that I do. I know. I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm getting there. You all will love me. Um, I'm excited to be here this evening with the rest of the whining women. Uh, you will enjoy the cocktail recipes, concoction, as this is said. We're ready to have some fun with you this evening. So get ready to sip and chat. Yum. That's right. I was going to say, let's jump right in. I personally think it's the best of both worlds. So does anybody want to want to go first and talk about their wine tail and sort of how you make it and what goes in it and all the great stuff? I, I will go first because I'm excited about mine. Okay, so I um, have a wine tail that is, hold on to your seats, but <laughs> the base is Sauvignon Blanc. Oh, oh. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Um, doesn't mean that I will drink it by itself, but <laughs> when I saw the recipe, <laughs> I said, I have to try this. It's a Kim Crawford inspired recipe. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, so I was like, I'm going, I'm going fully in. And so the name of what he calls it is Kim in the Swim. Uh, and um, that's dope. Mm -hmm. It is Sauvignon Blanc, and then um, they you use a vodka, and well, my favorite is Kettle One. So we use oh. Kettle One mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. and then what I like about it is we use um, fresh watermelon. Mm. Because watermelon, watermelon is kind of difficult to make in a cocktail because of oh, it, yeah. it has so much water content in it. Yeah, it does. You mm -hmm. get the true essence of it. Mm -hmm. But if you look at my cocktail, oh, it's you'll so see pretty. a little watermelon floating in there. Okay. And then we did a little simple syrup, lime, soda water, and grapefruit bitters. Now, I have to be oh, honest. I didn't have the so grapefruit good. bitters. Okay. So we, we took some fresh grapefruit juice. Though, okay. And we put a splash of that. And I think it's perfect. And then, you know, we just, we served it. The first one, we served it over ice. This okay. one doesn't have ice in it because I didn't want to water it down. I wanted you to see, like, the true color of it. And the color yeah. of it is nice. It's not, yeah. um, I was thinking it might be more pinkish because mm -hmm. of the watermelon, but yeah. it's not. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was very nice, and I had um, oh. I had a grilled salmon burger with it, Ooh. and so it was a perfect complement. Okay. To I, and I haven't had dinner, so that's fine. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> that's fine. So that is that is my cocktail. So thank you, Kim Crawford, for inspiring the Kim in the swim. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Very nice. That's yeah. a good one, Leslie. <laughs> yeah. I wonder how that would taste since you didn't have grapefruit bitters. Since bitters usually like bring, and I know Melissa's going to hit on this since she's the liquor lady. 
But since bitters bring like a drink together, I also wonder how the drink would taste with a different flavor bitter. Um, I wouldn't say oh. anything strong like Angostura or Peychaud, you know, the popular ones, but maybe like a lemon or like a different fruit mm. flavor mm -hmm. um, bitter. Something that, you know, was more readily accessible. Because right. since you don't use that many bitters in a drink, you might right. use two to three drops. It's tough to think like, oh, let me get this bottle for twenty three ninety five, and I need it for two drops. Like, I, yeah. it's a little hard to rationalize that. So, yeah. I just that's, wonder how it would taste with something that you would use a little more often, like a lemon or maybe a orange bitter or something mm -hmm. like that. That's a that's an interesting concept, um, Tanisha, because that's the reason why with some of these recipes, when I was looking doing research to find a uh, recipe that I want to use tonight. I was like, I don't know nothing about bitters. Let me just go ahead and get something that don't have it in there. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So thank you for that education. Mm -hmm. that. And Melissa, I know you, I mean, we've talked bitters before, so please speak a little bit more about it. I'll, I'll call you out if you can speak a little more on that. I agree with you. I think citrus bitters would have done something different to the cocktail, but I agree, not worth the money. It's really hard if you're at home and you're making a cocktail and it calls for bitters. I think if you use, kind of like you said, the grapefruit juice, um, you know, a little splash of lemon, I think anything to bring the flavor out, mm -hmm. I would not have killed myself for grapefruit bitters either. Mm -hmm. You never use them again. Like, you just never use them again. Yeah. So um, when you me... think about bitters in general, Melissa, um, just to talk about bitters right quick, when you think about them in general, as far as dropping the money on bitters, since you only use a few drops, what do you think are the important ones if you just want to stock your home bar or something that will go a stretch a little further that you can use in more drinks? Before you answer that, Melissa, can you tell people what bitters are for those who don't know and then go into that? Yeah. I mean, Tanisha, you're the best one on the education. Or Tanisha, yeah. They, they're an additive to a drink that brings out the essence of the flavor. Um, okay. It enhances the flavor of your drink. Um, Tanisha, is there a better way? No, that's kind of what its purpose is. I mean, and it is, it's alcohol in it, but it's like, it's alcohol. Oh, it's alcohol also, based. Okay. Mm -hmm, and then also oh. different flavors. It used to be, it was used in... A, I guess olden times, medieval times, yes. whatever. Okay. More medicinal. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. See. But the basic like recipe for a drink is what? Sugar, citrus, sugar. Yep. like sugar, <laughs> water, liquor, bitters. Bitter. Like oh. that is a cocktail. A bitters are what bring a drink together. They bring okay. the flavors together. Just a few drops, like completely helps mm -hmm. the flavors mesh. It's supposed mm -hmm. to round out the drink. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then there are different, like there are a ton of different flavor bitters. Grapefruit, oh, yeah. citrus, celery, hellfire, chocolate, tiki. mole, I mean, like tiki, Jamaican oh, wow. rum. Yum. I mean, like anything you could think of, it probably comes in a, in a bitter. bitter. The mm. popular ones, like I mentioned before, Angostura, Peychaud, so like if you're looking to have something on your bar, like I would say those two because they can go in just about anything. Oh, and then maybe like <laughs> orange. Oh, yeah. okay. Orange, okay. Orange, yeah. Right. Orange. But like your big ones are Fee Brothers, Peychaud, Angostura, Bitterman. Those are kind of the ones you'll see at your typical liquor store. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's traditional. Orange bitters, I mean, honestly, I, I mean... Don't tell anybody. I don't use bitters. I hate bitters. It's not a thing for me. If I go to a cocktail bar and a cocktail has bitters in it, I will order it, but I never mix it home. Mm. So oh, do you okay. buy bitters only at a um, they come in a liquor store, or do you buy them elsewhere there as well? You can get them. I mean, depending on what state you're in. Like, yeah. Um, oh, the state. A, okay. Yeah. Like Because they, they actually do bottle. carry liquor in them. So. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, you, you typically would get them in a liquor store. Yeah. <coughs> now, you can get Angostura, Peychaud, and Orange. You can get those at just about any liquor store, but some okay. of your flavored ones, you're going to have to go to specialty stores for those. Oh, okay. More so your, you know, fancier um, spirit shops. So not, liquor, not your corner liquor store. Gotcha. But your fancy spirit shop, you'll be able to find it there. 
Can't find it at the bodega. No, no. you no. You're not about to find no grapefruit. <laughs> And then I was going to say, I have never done it before, but you can make your own bitters. That's why I'm sitting here typing it <coughs> in my phone. Um, oh. There is a way to do it, and I just go Google, like, um, there is. There is, and because I actually have some bitters that um, this guy that I met on Twitter, he made some, and mm. he was talking about it. And I was like, oh, those sound delicious. He was like, well, I'll send you some. I was like, mm. well, here's my address. <laughs> so, so, what does it look like? When you say, I wish, I'm, I'm and really I'm not even close blood. to my, I'm not even close to my bottle. Um, I'll, I'll get mine. Okay, I was about to say I'm not close to mine. I'll Wait, get I'll, mine too. Think small. <laughs> you about to get what, Glenn? <laughs> I'm sorry, Melissa. Yeah, what were you saying? Syrup. Yeah. My point is Sarita, small. Oh. And I actually have enough. Yeah, okay, y'all carry tiny. on. I'm about to go find. I'm about to get my bottle. Yeah, it's really tiny, uh -oh. and I've had it. I've had it forever. Exactly. They don't go yeah. anywhere. Yeah. So, Sarita, so where'd you buy yours at? Um, uh, Total Wine. Total Wine as well? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. Yep, I've had it forever. And you don't need a whole lot when you a use it in cocktails. Drops. Yeah. A couple drops. Um, and normally they're clear. I mean, it's just like yeah. kind of pinching. Kind of like if you're doing a bourbon with water tasting, you do these droppers with water. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. Bitters, little drops. Okay. Yeah. So I know Tanisha has gone off in search of bitters here. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm back. And so I wanted to bring these are excuse me. <clears throat> these are pechos. Just so that's what those look like. Okay. Oh, yeah. Popular okay. one. Did you get those in Paris? No. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> you see your face. <laughs> um, these are bitterments. And these are Hellfire Habanero Shrub. Ooh. Ooh. That would be good in a um, Bloody this Mary. This is good um, in a Bloody Mary and then also in tequila drinks. Mm -hmm. This works well. And I see and they then, have a drop top. The yeah, it has top. a drop top. And then these are Shoe Fly. This is one, um, Home Speakeasy Bitters. This is the one that um, someone made for me. Lift it and up a little bit. Um, Excellent. Oh, okay. And it's called shoe. It's called shoe fly. It's blackstrap molasses, rum, apple, and garam masala. Mm. And so this, I've used it in more so like dark liquor drinks. Um, I put it in uh, a winter sangria. Oh, oh, that's cool. Oh. Mm. But like when you pull the dropper, I'm trying to. So like that's and you just you know a couple drops. Go ahead. And it take has it a real. Uh, yeah, no. No, it has a real like wintry apple pie baking spice kind of okay. smell to it. So okay. mm. think of that. I also have another friend, um, Alexandra King, who I mean knows her cocktails. Lives in Brazil now, and she makes it bitter. Her. She came and talked to one of my classes, and she brought in some of the bitter she made, and so. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Because it's okay. Because it's so time intensive, like twenty. It is days. because yeah. It's, think of think of making bitters as if you were um if you mold wine, and you make all you cut up all the spices and do all that yeah. yourself. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So wow. think of making bitters yeah. kind of like that. Whereas mm. I don't I don't do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which and speaking of wine tales, mold wine. There you go. That's a wine tale. It, I mean, it's not yeah. mine for today it because it's uh -huh. May. Yeah. So right. like nobody's right. drinking that now. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Tanisha, that was a perfect segue. You want to take us on our our next wine tale journey? Sure. And um, mine is an oldie but goodie. And anytime I think about a wine cocktail, this is my all time favorite. My go to the French seventy five. Ah. Yeah. And not just because I came back from France, but just because I am a French 75 fan. And so what a French 75 is, is champagne, gin, lemon juice, and then simple syrup. Mm. Oh. And Did you make your own simple, simple syrup? syrup? Yeah, I always make my own because, okay. like, I consider it, like, free because I always have sugar and water comes out my faucet. Yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> it's so easy to make. I it's think people easy. don't realize that how and easy. And also, yeah. it it is super easy to make. And what I also um have done a lot too to flavor a drink is I'll make a flavor simple syrup. Yes. 
Um, oh, okay. like I'll throw some. Okay. I'll put in the sugar in the water. I'll throw some strawberries in there. Um, mm -hmm. I'll throw some mint in there and do a mint simple syrup. I you know, know whatever what fruit is in season, throw ginger yeah. is a good one. Yeah. Um, pineapple, and then you can just flavor your drink that way. Yeah. Ooh. Mm -hmm. But so well, what can I, I go did? Oh, can go I ahead. Go next? Oh, no, you go. You finish. I'll go next. So uh, what I did for mine is just, you know, um, okay, so I kind of cheated with the lemon because I didn't have lemon, so don't tell anybody outside of this Google Hangout. <laughs> but I use lemon juice, so. Oh. Uh, yeah. Bro, but lemon juice. Sticking with my whole French thing, since, you know, I'm all things France, um, I use champagne for it. And I use gin. They also, in a French 75, you could use cognac because I have seen that in some recipes. I've heard of that. But to also think back and reminisce on my um, D.C., Virginia, Maryland roots, um, the gin I use is Catoctin Creek Watershed. Wow. Yeah. Oh. So, and this is actually, Yay. I went there and did a bottling, and so this one is actually bottled by Girl Meets Glass. So I don't know if you can see it at the bottom, but. Um, Lift it up some. Just I've signed, some. sorry. I've signed yeah. the bottle. Bottled by Girl Meets Glass. Oh, that's yeah. very cool. So, um, yeah. So, if you haven't been out there, Becky and Scott, um, out in uh, Percival, I think it is where they are, and they do a gin, they do um, a brandy, they do another uh, white spirit, delicious stuff. So, French seventy five. It's slightly tart from the lemon juice, but then you have the bubbles from the champagne, so it's very like crisp mm. and refreshing. I love it. This is how it looks in the glass. Like a little cloudy-ish, but you know what? Yeah. <laughs> it looks Listen. good. It is it good. good. Bottoms up. Cheers. Yeah. Yay. Yay. Cheers. Cheers. Now, I heard Sarita chomping at the bottom okay. there. Right. Uh, Sarita's like, oh, I want to go. I want to go. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to go because I made, um, my cocktail is made with apple simple syrup. Oh, um, that sounds good. <laughs> so, so we can go into that whole conversation about simple syrups again. So, so um, I have a juicer, and every summer I like, my favorite juice is watermelon juice. So um, the base of my cocktail is watermelon juice. No, okay, follow me because it's it's a little out there, but it's okay, watermelon I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna embrace myself. All right. All right, so it's watermelon juice, apple simple syrup, rum, cilantro juice, and it's topped off with kava. And this oh, is how wow. it looks. Oh. Oh, that looks good. Oh, that's yeah. pretty. Yeah. When it, and also, we don't use white sugar here, so the simple syrup is made with brown sugar. So I think that added okay. something else to it also. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. So yeah. I'm feeling healthy so. here, Sarita. I healthy. am. Like, I, feel like <laughs> I can have that and still, mm -hmm. you know, keep mm -hmm. my body tight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you say guava, um, mm -mm. Sarita? Mm-mm. Kava. 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 Yeah, oh, Kava is the, okay. Yeah, it's yeah. topped off with um, sparkling Kava. Kava. Oh, sparkling. Okay. And then I just used, um, where? I just used the um, Dominican Republic rum. Mm -hmm. Atlantico. And, um, yeah. and it's out here. Yeah, I know some people that would be very happy to see that. Shout and out to um, um, alias John P. on Twitter because he <laughs> works with Atlantico. <laughs> And um, I but always we don't do shout-outs. Oh, sorry. No, we don't. Like, no shout-out. Take that. No shout-out. No shout-outs. And I like shout-out. No shout-out. I like herbs in my uh, I like herbs in my drink. So, and I always like cilantro. So, I just use some cilantro, and there you have it. So that's cool that you have a juicer and could do that, because I know some people when they see certain cocktails and they're like, wait, how many ingredients? I'm not making this. Yeah. <laughs> I need two, three ingredients. They're like, how much? I'm not doing this. Yeah, it's only five. Yeah, so five, that's, you know, that's not bad. And then the yeah. fact that you have a juicer, that makes it so much easier. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. So you juice the cilantro? Yeah. You, okay, okay. So how mm -hmm. much cilantro did you have to juice? Um, right. not, not, a, not a whole lot, because I didn't want it to be, like, green. So okay. I didn't want the color. I wanted the color to stay pretty. 
Hmm. So I only took a couple of sprays, and I had to press down the juicer really hard. And it's, okay. you know, it gave me a couple of drops, and that's all I needed. So okay, yeah. But, okay, and then from there, so when you took it out of the juicer, like, did you put it through a shaker to chill it, and well, then you just topped it? How did you build it? No, I didn't use a shaker at all. Um, I just first put. Well, I did. Um, I used the colander to kind of strain the watermelon juice because sometimes the little bits get in there. Mm -hmm. But that was mm -hmm. the only work, the work I had to put into this cocktail. So I just, okay, so I juiced the watermelon, I juiced the cilantro, I put a little bit in the glass, and then I added the rum. Um, the simple syrup, I guess that was work too because I had to cut <laughs> up the apples and it had to, yeah, okay. So that was a little bit, yeah. So I had to cut up the apples. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the cool thing about simple syrup is you don't have to use it right then. Like you right. can sure. or, uh, put it right. in the fridge and use it later. Because the thing is, I plan to do a few test runs with this watermelon juice because I didn't know. I didn't want to do vodka because I always drink vodka. So yeah, it could go either way little, when you're trying stuff out. Yeah, so I did a little test run. I was like, well, how about I put rum since I'm using brown sugar in the simple syrup? And I was like, damn, this is pretty good. So I just decide to roll with it. It kind of it really grew on me. So okay. what made you decide to use the brown sugar? Cuz right. we don't use cuz I don't use white sugar. Right, right sugar, right. Okay. So yeah. this was a Sarita concoction. This was Pretty yeah, I was going to say yeah. how did Okay, so you came up with the drink? Mm -hmm. I was going to say how did you find Oh, okay. Yeah. Very yeah. nice. Yeah. Yep, all mine. Mixologist in So I you tried. got right, so you got to name it. I Well, I was thinking I was thinking of one I was calling it while I was making it. I was calling it Kava Lava because once uh -huh. you pour, once you pour, it lava, looks like it lava. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that's yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Kava Lava. There it is. Kava Lava. Yeah. Kava Lava. I like there you it. Go. <laughs> mm, cheers. 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 Oh yeah, and that's something else. Um, I don't know if you said it or I just missed it, but Leslie, did your drink have a name? It's um. It's Kim. The Kim Swim. The Kim Swim. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just want to make sure we, you know, yes. Kim mm -hmm. Swim. Swimming with Kim. Right. Got it. All right. Swimming <laughs> with Kim, French 75, Kava Lava, and then Miss Lennon. What are you sharing with us tonight? It is called the Merlot Mash. So okay. not Monster Mash. The Merlot. <laughs> Okay. So, <laughs> Did you really? Do, 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 do. That yeah, was everything. Yeah. Was yeah. Um, you know, with summer approaching, and most people tend to not want to drink red or heavy reds during the summer because they feel it too heavy, it makes them hot, whatever, whatever. I figured I'd use something um, for this um, wine tail that had used a red wine. So um, the base of this particular drink um, is a Merlot, because the Merlot mash, yeah, that was a really simple one. And my favorite all-time liqueur, cognac, is mm -hmm. Grand Marnier. Love, love, love uh, Grand okay, Marnier. Okay. I could drink it straight. Drink That's it. an expensive taste over there. Uh-huh, definitely. Look how big this bottle is. She got the biggest one. Yeah. Let me see. Yeah, she got the biggest one. And it's empty. Uh, well, no, I can't see the line, no. I can't see the line. There's a little bit of that. I can't see the line. Yeah. Look, you got to turn it all the way to the side. Look, it's um, in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> um, The Marlowe Mash is very simple. It doesn't have any bitters. Hi, ah, yeah, because I didn't know what it was. Trying to handle that. Um, And since I have an affinity for wine, when you start mixing other things, I was like, huh, let me just use a wine that is decent, but not expensive. So I used um, right. Sterling Ventures 2011. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Okay, that's a nice one. It's, it's decent, yeah. um, but it's not, you know, 25 and up where you're going to mix it with other things. So yeah. you take... A, I used a shot of Grand Marnier. <laughs> it 
actually she, I'm wait a minute I'm gonna look at the recipe how, I'm mad at this part though I'm how, right. it's, it's, how many it's shots like, uh-huh. an big shot or a little so shot. I use a shot and then you know cause I love grandma yeah that's me um <laughs> Also, it said use a half, so about four ounces of the wine. Mm, I'm not sure if that happened, just four ounces, but okay. We're going to go with that. <laughs> um, right. Soda water. I use Pellegrino because this is my favorite. I, I don't like club soda too much. Soda. So I use mm-hmm. Pellegrino. Um, it calls for honey. Look at the little berry. I love that all the ingredients are right there. Oh, yeah, right, right here. Right. Right here. I will move the camera, but you know how I do. I yeah, don't, don't, don't. Right, mm-hmm. you're right. Because you're going to cut out. You won't be yeah. in no more. I, yeah, right, just, yeah, 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 yeah. Look, we can just move, your, here. Yeah, just move your body. Yeah. Right. right. It's so, um, and, and lemon. <laughs> um, also, in this Marlowe mash is I'm laughing at us, any, any mixed berries. So I have strawberries, raspberries, blueberries. In the um drink, so okay, how, so you how, ain't how, like a grown folk sangria, like right? right. Well, I'm it's not like calling to get a sangria. It's called the Merlot Mash. Okay, I was like Sorry. not going with the sangria thing. I was oh. like, that's just too common. It's just called the Merlot Mash. Um, so what you what you do? You put the berries in the honey, muddle, then add your wine, Grand Marnier, ice. You can actually use frozen berries instead of ice, so it doesn't oh, water uh-huh. it down. Yeah, oh, which makes it really okay. good. Yeah. And then right. you top it off with your sparkling water and a twist. Then you have a time to breathe. I don't know if you can see. Time mm-hmm. to breathe. Okay. Cheers. WBC thirteen glass. I recognize it. There you go. Yay! I love you. Um, it's actually very good. So yeah, I guess it sounds consider. good. Yeah, it does. I also wonder since you top it off with um soda water, I mm-hmm. wonder how the flavors would be if you topped it with like champagne or sparkling wine or mm-hmm. uh, don't something, something like fire though. How much time we have? How much time we have? Because I can really pick up. Yeah, just, I mean, just something like a dry one, like nothing with like a sweet well, flavor, but like right. a very dry, basic. And I mean, nothing like even expensive. Like if you talk about like, like, or something. Right. Or like my favorite, you know, lower budget California sparkling tots. I think tots might be like oh, $7.99. Yeah. Tots, uh-huh. Tots was like what I that was like my mimosa <coughs> one because wow. mm-hmm. if I'm mixing it with something like I'm not about to spend like I'm not about to use my thirty five dollar a bottle right. champagne no, right. yeah. No. Yeah. 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 Tots and so, some orange juice which another wine tale if you want to talk about wine tales like we can't forget tried and true mimosa, mimosa. Yeah. Like, right yeah. right mimosa yeah. and then sangria. Mm-hmm. Like, those are ones that everybody can think, like, oh, let me. Because when it comes to sangria, you throw your Grand Marnier in there. Yep. You throw your cognac. You can throw rum. I've snuck all those mm-hmm. into my sangria. Stop. So. I do gin A lot of people use sangria. Do, do you? Do you? After I okay. You can use triple cocktail, second. I don't I'll like that. About... Oh, that's right. We haven't talked about your cocktail. I'm oh, sorry. I'm going to love the cocktail. Right. Yeah, right. I... Listen, girl. No, Give it to us. I'm all thinking sangria. But I did a cocktail called... An escropino. Um, okay, can you spell been, that, please? No, you know the you know liquor lady had to come out with something for right. you. Right. Uh-huh. <laughs> for you. And I'm not Italian, so it's S G R O P P I N O. I call it escropino. I go with that. No, you have to say with that. Escropino. You have to do the time. Escr. Right, boy. Escropino. You know. Escropino. Need the escropino. There you go. So I have been on a vodka kick. I thought it was kind of cool that you know, Sarita mm-hmm. talked about not wanting to do vodka. Mm-hmm. Um, I have been going through Tony Abagaman's vodka distilled book and cooking different recipes from there. And uh, I found one that I wanted to hold on to because, one, it's right before Memorial Day. Uh, so it's sort of the kickoff for summer. So mm-hmm. this is actually a concoction. It starts with lemon sorbet. Mm. So Yum. Is- Oh, this is right. Bello. It's a pint. You have to use a pint of sorbet, but this, you can get this brand in Whole Foods. Right. You add, and I apologize. I did not have time to make my own lemoncello. 
Girl, you fine. I told oh, my God. secret. So, true confessions. This is Caravella. Hashtag true confessions. True confessions. <laughs> I needed four days, and I didn't have four days to let it rest. So, Caravella Limoncello. Um, then there's four ounces. I use Imperia Russian Vodka. Mm -hmm. You put that all in a mixing bowl. You stir, stir, stir till it's blended. Then you top with eight ounces of Prosecco. Oh, wow. Oh. That sounds so good. I use La Marca. Uh -huh. I have it signed by our wine ma the winemaker. Oh, of La come on. Really? I really? a different bottle. Really, though? Melissa's so extra. I love it. Oh, my gosh. Like, oh, I thought I was showing it off. I thought I was showing off. It's signed by the winemaker. My goodness. So, so if you don't have know. the winemaker sign it, is it still okay to use? Sure. <laughs> I went to the Montgomery County liquor store and bought a, a $12.99 bottle. That's right. So, but yours is worth more because the winemaker signed it. So you might want to put that back in there and like shove the cork back in. You might be able to get some more money for it. Yeah. So you, take your, you just take your mixing bowl, you pour it in a pitcher, and you can serve Man. it. It's perfect for guests and all that kind of stuff. It's a lot of fun. Are you, are you, making, oh, are you making that for the business meeting? That would be cute. Right. That, would be, that sounds real good. So how do you make limoncello? Oh, so lemon, Ooh. sugar, water, and cellos. What the heck is cellos? <laughs> what is cellos? I'm kidding. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm like, wait, I'm like, wait what? I'm like, and cellos, lemons and cellos. Like, I'm kidding. So, wait, did you like me? What, what did you call cello. champagne on Instagram? And I was like, what, what is that? Is, is that's that what champers. I so, I oh. said champers. You were like, oh wait, that's what we call it waffle balls. I said, yeah, so that's yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I didn't know what champers oh, wow. Anyway, I'm sorry. No, 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 you're fine. Typically limoncello is made with, I forget, some special kind of lemon from Italy, but I would go to Whole Foods, buy some lemon. Right. And get the lemon in the bear in the basket. In the that's right. they're called. In the bags. And then you mm -hmm. take off you take off the rind. So you take that off, use a little bit of that. You're gonna put sugar, water, and some vodka. And you're basically going to let it, mm. it you're going to let it infuse. Let it infuse, okay. That's right. Four days later, <laughs> you pour it out, you strain it out, and you've got homemade limoncello. So says Giada. That was her recipe, so I'm kind of, I'm going to still do that, but I went and I bought mine anyway. So, uh, yeah. But yeah, if you're looking I mean, for something like yeah, it's a lot of Yeah, it's a lot of stuff you can make at home, but you know, you pick and choose what you make at home right, versus right. what you just want to go out and buy because you don't want to. Just deal with right. it. So. That's right. So that was the escropino. But I will say, so back to sangria, because that is a main mm. thing full of cocktails. Yeah. 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 My, oh, my family hates it when I make sangria because it's oranges, lemons, limes, pineapple chunks, ginger ale, orange juice. Um, you throw in some gin. And then I typically use Pinot Noir. So yeah. Ooh. Of all okay. that, let it sit. And then the next day I drink it. Oh, okay. you don't feel so much so better. It's too light. Do it, um, if you do it overnight, I, I I definitely think it has a different flavor and it tastes better if you let it um all sit and marinate and melt overnight. Right. It does. It does. So you don't feel the Pinot Noir is too light? I was yeah, I was gonna ask the same thing. Why don't you use a cab? Cab, something you little cab heavy. Shiraz, Zen. Yeah. Well, I was gonna ask. That was one of my questions for you guys. So before I answer why I use it. What, you know, what, when you're doing a red sangria or even a white sangria, what varietals do you typically okay. use and, and why? A heavy one. Mm. I would, I, and I actually I use, use different, I make different sangrias depending on the season. So, like, in the winter, I would do a red sangria, and I actually, I do a heavier. I usually do a Shiraz or a Zinfandel. Then in the summer, if I'm doing sangria, I'm probably doing um, Pinot Grigio. Mm. Don't yeah, shoot me, but I'm I am not the biggest fan of soft blanc, so I'm gonna do a Pinot Grigio as a I am, I am not a sangria fan, but when I do have it, it's it's usually red and it's in the summer, and it has I don't know strawberries, grapes, and I I don't know I kind of choose uh, a low budget Cabernet. Mm. I, I agree. I don't with know. You, Sarita. Yeah. yeah, I I I totally agree. I I am a red sangria person. And um, I would use a Merlot Zen mm -hmm. or a Cab. 
Um, I think it's interesting that, Melissa, that you said you would use a, excuse me, a Pinot Noir. Yep. To me, I think the liqueur would overwhelm the Pinot Noir. So, to, and that's why I was like, wow, I'm, I might have to try it because I that's never, something I've got to try. Have you all got to try it? The reason um, I use but, it is totally different. I don't put a liqueur in mine. Like, there's no Grand Marnier. Uh, okay, no so that's, that's what I, okay. Okay, okay there, there it is. is. Yeah, no. There it is. There it is. No. Gotcha. Right. For the orange liqueur. Since I'm Glenn, use. And since Glenn is trying to get people twisted on the low, so like you gotta use a heavier wine. <laughs> I'm like, why do I feel this way? Why do my knee why, why do my legs feel weird? <laughs> so I'm really gonna use, you know, I'm gonna use grandma, yeah, instead of triple sec. She I, I using just, yeah, Glenn is using grandma mm -hmm. and the sangria. So mm -hmm. yeah. you guys, that, you guys everybody falling out. Can't nobody drive home. <laughs> <laughs> Air mattresses for everybody. <laughs> You've been drinking. Right. <laughs> that is too funny. Yeah, I recently saw a Leslie, what would you do? I would use I would use a cab. And I quite honestly, I would use a cab because I was always afraid if I used um a a less Bolder wine mm -hmm. that you would lose, lose you would lose the punch, the effect of it, and that and the fact of it, you know, marinating the fruits, marinating overnight or what have you, you still would not have um, the essence of the wine the next day. So that's why I just made that assumption, but that's good to know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You guys, you guys were totally right. Most people, when they make a red sangria, it's with something like a Rioja, a Syrah, I mean a mm -hmm. Cap, a Chianti, something that's real full-bodied. And if they're doing mm -hmm. a white sangria, it's typically something drier, like a Pinot Grigio, a Sans Blanc. Mm -hmm. you know, those are your traditional ones. But, you know, I think the you can definitely experiment, kind of like you can drink red wine with fish these days. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Just totally Absolutely. experiment with your sangria. So. And and I was going to say I just saw a sangria recipe, a white sangria to use an albarino. Mm. Oh yeah. So oh my I, god. I was going to curious to try that to see how that would be. And I, I actually I have, have a white sangria first. recipe. I'll have to post it. Mm. It came from um oh gosh, it's Natalie Bovis's book where she, it's all like fresh fruits and stuff that she's using. I can't think of the name of her book. I'm so sorry. But this sangria, I've made it for um, tasting events that I've done because I always like to serve some kind of cocktail um, before we get started. And it's always been like a hit. I'll have to, yeah, I'm about to, I'll have to look it up. Wow. Well, Tanisha brought up a great point. I was going to say there are two books. They're Kim Hassard books. Um, one is the 101 Sangrias and Pitch and Drink. Oh. Mm. The 101 mm. Champagne Cocktails. So those mm. are two books if you're looking for recipes and ideas. And it's really it's, it's pretty simple, pretty basic. Kim's really good about that. I thought her books are good resources if you're looking for recipes. Everything from the French 75 to stuff we've never heard of. Mm. So... Ouch. Okay, so you guys ready for another question? Of mm -hmm. course. So sure. what, we've, we've talked about a lot of them, but sort of what's your favorite wine tale? So whether you're at home making something or if you're out at a restaurant, you know, what have you been impressed by or what's kind of your, your favorite wine tale or the most original one that you've seen? Oh, wow. Um, I know that's the really? hard question. <laughs> Mm. I don't know. Because I was going to use, for that, I was definitely going to talk about sangria and the Pinot Noir. And the oh, I have lighter. one. I have one, Melissa. All right. Um, yeah. It's a mojito made with Sauvignon Blanc. Ooh. What? Oh, yes. Nice. I was outdone. <clears throat> I was like, is that my, because unlike some of our other whining women, I love Sauvignon Blanc. <laughs> That's like one of my favorite white varietals. <laughs> so hey, everybody it, likes something. I, exactly. <laughs> I, when I saw it on the menu, and I love mojito and I love mint, it was made the base of it. And I started to do it here, but I was like, I wanted to do a red because folks don't do reds in the right. summer as much. Right. But, yeah, so a mojito made with the liquor or the 
not the liquor, but the um, wine, the, the base, base yeah. was oh, a Sauvignon Blanc. So a Sauvignon Blanc mojito. Oh, That's wow. awesome. Wow. Mm -hmm. I, my, I think my favorite is the very simple peach bellini. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's just it's so simple. And I'm, you know, I'm not a sparkling girl, but I could have those all the time. Very cool. Very and cool. also, Anything. when you start thinking like Bellinis, if you're mixing anything with um, sparkling wine, like yeah. you can start doing any kind of juices. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, know, you can muddle cranberries. You can muddle blueberries. Mm -hmm. You can muddle strawberries. Um, you can do mixed berries, and then just put those at the bottom right. of your glass, and then just build on top of that. Mm -hmm. And you don't think you have to stick to um, champagne or sparkling wine either. <clears throat> Try it with Prosecco. Try it with mm -hmm. Lambrusco. Um, you know, put a cobble on top of it and just see how the flavors mm. change and how they develop. Mm. Yeah. Um, my oh, go, oh. go, Serena. Go, go. Oh, no, one of my favorite cocktails is something that I made at home on a whim after hours on Pinterest. So... Oh. I made, um, I told you I have a juicer, so I made strawberry juice, and mm. I made these skinny strawberry popsicles, so out of strawberry Yum. juice and, and chunks of strawberry, and then I dropped it in a glass of um, Prosecco, and it was like the best thing ever, but, wow. and it was so simple, it was so simple, you think strawberries and, you know, sparkling wine, but the way it kind of like came together, it was, yeah, it was really good, so that's my... Cocktail. I could see that. Favorite I could cocktail. Definitely, see that. definitely be a party pleaser if you have like a summer, I don't know, summer party or something like that. Yeah. Right. No, and I think you guys talked about it a little bit, but how do you pick your either bubbles or your wine for your spark for your wine tails? I mean, I heard some pick an inexpensive one. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you guys go about selecting the right thing? What Drinking. Trial and error. Yeah, Sorry. definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, mine was eight dollars. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. My cobble was eight dollars. what was everybody else's price point for their for their cocktail? For, the, for their for their oh, wine that's... part, the base of their cocktail. So Serena was about eight dollars for her mm -hmm. wine. Where were you? At, Asia? Yeah. Um, since I wanted to do the whole actual French thing, which is why I'm assuming they called it a French 75, so, um, <laughs> I did a lower in um, champagne, which is one that I probably wouldn't necessarily drink, like, buy to drink on its own, but mine came in at, like, 15, 16. Okay. 16, I think, yeah. Okay. Leslie, how did you get to Kim Crawford? How did you pick that particular one? Well, I... I was Googling recipes, to be honest with you, and um, because I'm not at home, I was working with the bartender at the hotel. So I was okay. Way to network. Mm -hmm. It's done. I like it. I like yeah. it a lot. Yep. So that's how it it happened. It came about. No, but that's awesome. That means somebody that's traveling and on the road, they can probably get Kim Crawford. They can get this cocktail. That's pretty yes. cool. Yes. And they can make it and have it in their room. So I'm a fan of this. Yes. Because <laughs> I'm a big fan of now, if you all didn't know, you can carry minis in the Ziploc bag. So since you can do the whole oh, yeah. thing mm -hmm. with the minis yep. in the bag, yeah. mm -hmm. and these are things that you can, you know, put together Put a couple of bottles in the Ziploc. Um, you can have a couple orange slices, a couple lemon slices, a little thing, you know, you have a little thing like this, a bitters if you want, and then you can just ask the flight attendant for some Coke or for some soda water or some tonic, and then there you go. You know, you have yourself your own ready-made wine tail cocktail, and then you take the rest of the flight, and you know, people next to you are jealous because right. you got it in and you zip it right. up. Yeah. But you know what? That sounds like a great gift for someone also. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah. Somebody that you know that travels. Yeah. To have that, that is a great gift. Yep. 
Definitely. And if you don't want to keep buying minis, what you do is just take the um, little bottles that you can get from the drugstore or Target or whatever, and then just pull from your big bottles, pour it in there, uh, yeah. and then just put it in your supply bag. Just make sure yeah. you know what it is. Like, don't take the gin out and think, like, it's your toner for your skin. Yeah. Like, remember <laughs> that it is, in fact, gin. Yeah. But, you know, yeah, you can make yourself a nice... You know, kind of fancy cocktail out of your Ziploc bag um, and right on your little pull-down tray. Mm-hmm. That's right. And yep. like you're doing something. Yeah. Like you can yep. even put your little orange or lemon wedge on the side uh -huh. of your cup. There you go. Yep. That's right. <laughs> put your headphones. Put your earbuds in. That's right. Play a movie. Like you're you good. good. You are good. Since everybody can't fly business or first class and have all the free stuff that comes with that. Right. You yeah. Know. Yeah. That's not everybody's life. Girl. <laughs> I like the fact that Glennis, I'm sorry, Melissa, oh. I like the fact that Glennis used a red wine and she didn't make a sangria. Mm -hmm. Because I find that um, as much as people say, I love dry wine, I love dry wine, then once you serve them a red wine, they twist up their face because they go crazy. Yeah. 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 And right. so I think a wine tail is a perfect transition for people Absolutely. who are interested in trying reds, but they have not educated their palate yet or trained their palate for mm -hmm. red wines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, Leslie, I think, you know, when I do wine tastings, I tell people all the time, the first thing w before I start serving a red, stop thinking sweet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it, it, it's all in your mind because if your mind is thinking it's going to be sweet, you're going to be offended by it because it's mm -hmm. not sweet. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. So yeah. I tell them, do not think sweet. Just start thinking of the characteristics of the wine. Is mm -hmm. it balanced? So you start talking to them while they're tasting and it's not offensive. Yeah, and, right, right. But yeah. you need to start with not a real bold panic. Correct. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know, you, you yeah. know, a wine that's like a red that's middle of the road that they can um, also enjoy as well. Mm -hmm. But um, you, you're right. You, sangria is a way to get them started with reds. Yeah. Um, a red zen is, to me, I, I, I've transformed a whole lot of people to <laughs> drinking reds with a red zen. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I have my disclaimer up front. Don't think sweet. It's not sweet. It's not Kool-Aid. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and, I, and I have to say, I have transitioned a lot of people with dry rosé because yes. mm -hmm. it's so oh, pretty. Oh, yeah. It's the, the visual is going to get them first anyway, especially oh if it's a, group, it's a group of girls. Uh -huh. But, you know, oh, very the much visual, so. it's so cute. It's so pretty. It looks nice in the glass. And I'm mm -hmm. thinking, you know, I tell them, like, listen, don't think white Zippendale. That's not it. It's still yeah, good. Yeah. It's, right. it's still good. It's still good. But, and the but bottles, yeah. rosé bottles, are always so much different than just your regular wine yeah. bottles. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. your, most of your rosé bottles are not just the straight up, you know, <laughs> high shoulder or low shoulder yeah. bottles. Like, right. they'll be yeah. curvy. They'll have something to them. They'll be um, etched in the bottle, or there'll be this fancy label. There's always mm -hmm. something a little yeah. more to rosé. And then I also love the range of colors, from the palest yeah. of pink mm -hmm. to like right. that salmony kind of orange color and yeah. everything in between. Like when I went to that rosé tasting Provence in Paris, uh -huh. like, sorry, mm -hmm. I, 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 I mean... I didn't. I didn't mean to bring it up, so you would like hate me. But um, well, it worked. It worked. It worked. Like to just look at this whole row or sea of just all these different pinks, and then it's all the grapes that I love in Provence: Syrah, Grenache, and so Mauvais. Like all of these all together, and I just love those blends anyway. Mm -hmm. And just to have them all in one place, like I just didn't know what to do. Yeah. The only unfortunate thing was I wanted to ask questions and really like engage with the winemakers, but I was in Paris, so they spoke French uh, and um, I spoke English. So uh -huh. <laughs> they really t and what was funny is a lot. Some of it I was really understanding, so I understand wine French. 
So right. they would say stuff. Yeah. They would say, oh, cepage, and they would talk about the grapes, and, the, and I know numbers, so they would talk about the grapes and the percentages, and, I, and you know, where they were. I'm like, yep, I get all of that. But then when they would ask me questions, no. But then when they would ask me questions about what am I doing there, what's happening, I'm like, yeah, so, um, and I'm like, oh, okay, and then they're like, oh, American? I'm like, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Mm. Uh, to Paul Anglais, I'm like, mm -hmm, I do. <laughs> I do. I gotta take it back to Shangria real quick. Girl, okay. take it back. I'm gonna take it back to my glass. <laughs> we all know, you know, Shangria is your wine, plus your spirit. But what, you know, where does the concoction originally come from? What two countries does Shangria originally come from? I think you guys know this. Spain, Mex Spain, and Mexico. Spain is one. Yeah. Thank you. Spain oh. and Cuba. Not South. Of what? Portugal. 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 Oh. 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 Yeah, I might not have ever said that. No, I wouldn't have gotten there either. Yeah, I would have been all Central America. No. That was that was. Sort of I was gonna go Spain and Italy. I don't know why, which is really not it. But yeah. yeah. So <laughs> Italy definitely went across my mind. Right. Because I, I just love the country. I just love the country. Yeah. Perfect. Italy's all right. No, I'm just playing. I love it. Hey, don't hate on Italy. I went all Italy today with sorbet and limoncello and some. Yeah. Food. You kind of did in the name. Yep. So, so. What else did we miss? What other questions are out there? What else do we need to answer people? We talked bitters. We talked recipes. We talked favorite wine tales. Right. We, we talked talk simple syrup. Simple syrup. Absolutely. What did we miss? What do we need to talk about? Um, well, I think, oh, I'm sorry. We touched on what wine we use and the price point mm -hmm. using a less expensive wine. But is there anything wrong if you didn't use it? Uh, a higher price point wine. Mm. Mm. Oh, which you not want to? Um, no, because you can also use. you go back and forth with that same issue with um, uh, bartenders and like them telling you what to do in your home bar when you start making right. some of these more complex cocktails. Mm -hmm. If you're doing a straight up cocktail with just like the liquor and you know one other juice, you want a higher end spirit because you want to actually taste the flavor of the spirit. But as you start to mix five, six different juices and ingredients and you know things together, you don't necessarily need just the cleanness and you know all of that of the actual spirit or the wine itself right. because yeah. you're changing the flavor. Right. So any imperfections or impurities, anything like that, you're masking that with the five other things that you just mixed okay. it with. All right. So I think it depends on how much you're mixing right. it. Right. right. Now, I think that was a great answer. I think I'll do it from the other side. So I think about Glennis. She used Grand Marnier, an expensive, you know, orange mm -hmm. liqueur, with a less expensive wine. So I think it's also what's in your cabinet, what's your yeah. personal yeah. wine. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. I'm not balling like that. So, you know, yeah. I wanted to, to save my expensive mm -hmm. bubble. But, um, you know, I think it makes, like Tanisha said, it makes sense to use a lower price. But if that's your thing and you've got a favorite, this $25, $30 bottle, go for mm -hmm. it. Buy it. Yes. And drink and it. That is Buy it, shake it, drink it. Right. That's exactly right, Melissa. Um, there was no way I was going to use a very expensive bottle of wine to blend with a spirit that I love, um, especially when it called for an orange liqueur. Anytime anything calls for an orange-based liqueur, it's going to be Grand Marnier for me. Yay, love Grand Marnier. <laughs> Um, triple sec. I'm like, yeah, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> can't do that. Um, so yeah. yeah. No, and I mean, I think you know, to that same point, I Lamarca was really inexpensive. It was on sale for twelve ninety nine. I think there were proseccos that were less expensive. Mm -hmm. I just hadn't heard of them before. Uh -huh. so I, still, you know, I didn't go quite to the bottom, bottom, like below mm -hmm. ten dollars. I wanted to say, you know, something I knew. I knew it had decent quality, but it wasn't going to break right. the bank because there were some exactly. of them like $20, 25 So right. it was kind of an in-between play for me. Yeah. So, 
that's like Sterling. Vin, Sterling. Sterling is one of those wines. It's consistent, and you know what you're gonna get, and you can catch it on sale. And that's what I was like. Okay, I'm not a big Merlot drinker, but I said, let me go with Sterling because I know it's going to be of decent quality. Yeah. Right. So did we I, – I think we covered everything, ladies. We did. Well, I must say thank you guys. It was amazing. I loved all the different recipes, all the different brands, all the different names in the cocktail. Mm -hmm. So uh, I must say, what do we say? Cheers! Cheers! Yes. Yes. You say cheers. Empty glasses. Yeah. Empty yeah. glass. Yeah, I'm not empty. Yeah. it's okay. I got a backup. So <laughs> before we close out, though, <laughs> Melissa, are we gonna talk about or just tell everybody to stay tuned for our next wine chat? I wasn't next, sure. Next <laughs> wine chat is gonna be rosé, summer rosé. Exactly. Oh, collection. Oh, sorry, I got hyped. My bad. Yeah. All right, and we're back to the first Tuesday of the month, right? First Tuesday in June. So okay. that's in a couple of weeks. Yep, uh -huh. just a couple of weeks. Okay, all right. Okay. okay. Excellent. Yay. Yay. So and when we say rosé, we're talking any rosé. Rosé, rosado, white zinfandel, whatever. White zinfandel. Because y'all know me and Sutter, really? my boy. rosé. Come what? Girlfriend, I'm gonna stop. Could you stop? Are you my? Are you serious? Stop. Stop. Just stop it. <laughs> I already have my rosé. I already bought it. <laughs> I'm ready. Look, I'm gonna need whatever she's drinking because whatever that is, that's good. Mm. Can Glennis not be so extra credit? Like, why do you already have your rosé? Because to, like, I'm gonna be scrambling. In because the, Serena the, said it when we started talking about doing a wine tale. So when I was in the wine store, yeah. I bought it. I don't know what's going to go on. Because, yeah. you know, I might, I might have some technology issues. I can't have to say wine. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. All right. Tuesday uh -oh. in June, we're talking rosé. <laughs> I, I love the wine and women. Y'all are hilarious. It's we love you, too. A ton of fun, and cheers until next time. Thank you. Cheers! Enjoy. <laughs>